Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Glad that you could return for another segment. We're going to be speaking with Andy Panos in this segment. He's president of U.S. Telehealth at UpHealth and founder of Marty by UpHealth. It's a telehealth platform that includes language access. He's going to talk about how language barriers affect patient care and hospital stress. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Andy Panos. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Neil. I appreciate it very much. Well, give us a, a brief look into your professional background and talk about your role as president of U.S. Telehealth at UpHealth. Well, thank you very much. You know, one, one point I'd like to make and, and really stress is that, you know, UpHealth, it's really our priority to provide greater access to quality health care for everyone, you know, especially our underserved communities. And that starts with making sure that every patient is able to communicate. And a lot of people don't understand that, that when a person walks into the hospital, if they don't speak English, that they're facing a healthcare disparity. And that healthcare disparity is really actually not understanding their provider when they, when they come in. So, you know, from our standpoint, we wanted to develop a product based upon a family event of mine that happened some time ago that allowed people to get that equal access to care. And it's really one of the, it's really kind of our mission that, that we strive to do on a, on a daily basis. Now, before uh, you tell us what happened, how many people would you say here in the United States have trouble speaking and understanding English? You know, that, that number surprised me from the very beginning. Mm-hmm. Being here in the Ohio Valley, I thought everybody spoke English when, uh, when we started this company. It's just kind of the basis of what people think. We're in the Midwest. Mm-hmm. But there are over 25 million individuals in the United States that have limited English proficiency, including about 16 million of them that are Spanish uh, or Spanish-only speaking. And out of that, come to think about this, almost 10 million of the people are deaf and hard of hearing, and close to about a million of them are functionally deaf. So there's a massive marketplace that uh, I think goes unnoticed. Something happened to you personal, a personal experience that kind of sparked this company or this this endeavor. It did. You know, uh, I had a brother uh, that was traveling through Mexico, and he was involved in a pretty bad car crash. And, and, um, you know, people were pronounced dead. My brother was actually pronounced dead. And then it wasn't until he started screaming that they realized he was alive. And... um, you know, they kind of packed him up, got him to a hospital. And that's really where that anxiety and that fear started because we didn't speak Spanish and the people that we were uh, talking with didn't speak English. And you could only imagine a family member being injured in, in a country and you're like, what is going on? Is he alive? Is he dead? And that disparity happens every single day here in the United States in our emergency rooms, in our labor and delivery, and in all these different areas where people come in, just like our family, and they're not being understood. And so we really set out. I didn't didn't know what a healthcare disparity was back in the day. We just thought, hey, there's a need here because it happened to my brother. It's happening right here in the United States. Let's figure a way that we can create that equal communication. And we started the video medical industry and, and really bringing an interpreter, spoken language or an American Sign Language interpreter, to the point of care through a video platform. And as you can only imagine, back in 2004, doing a FaceTime call like what we do today or a Zoom call, it was almost kind of like, you know, a seance. People would touch the screen, you know, can you hear me, can you see me? It was great, it was a lot of fun. And uh, here we are today, you know, doing that over, you know, uh, know, 200,000 times a month that we're doing right now. It would seem that for decades, you know, since for decades we've had uh, interpreters in the legal system, in courtrooms, uh, you can't see a major event on the news without having a, a, a person signing for those who are hard of hearing or deaf. Why do you think that such a, a service hasn't been implemented long before now in the healthcare industry? In true uh, you know, honesty here, there has, there has been... Uh, services. They're either a face-to-face interpreter, where the inter- you know they called the hospital would call an interpreter and they would go to the uh, to the encounter. Maybe there was telephone, but you're right. In an emergency situation, a provider is just really trying to you know get get the patient stabilized, mm-hmm. help them, and do it as quickly as possible. And what happened is that a lot of the times they would just resort to maybe using a family member or somebody that was in the room that could help them do that communication. And that led to, you know, lots of errors because of 
you know, non-training in med- medical terminology, different things like that, that would really affect that outcome. But from our standpoint, bringing in a video endpoint, which gives you kind of the best of both worlds, it gives you that kind of in-person uh, kind of communication along with the audio. And the benefits, obviously, are the, the video interpreter can pick up nonverbal cues from the patient. Uh, they're culturally competent, so they can help bridge that conversation when, when there's cultural differences that might take place. And so, uh, you know, it's just it's a, it's a much higher standard of communication that can take place. Now, what's your service called and uh, can it be used when doing remote doctor visits as well as actually in the hospital setting? So our service is called Marty. Uh, I was a big fan of uh, a Saturday Night Live character back in the day called Pat. So we need to get a kind of a name that everybody (laughs) remember Pat. So we got Marty, you know, that that sounds like a pretty good name. Um, You know, the pandemic really brought attention to the fact that telehealth or televisits could be a very effective way of seeing a provider. But what happened in in the haste of of spinning up telehealth platforms is they intentionally, or not intentionally, forgot about the limited English proficient or deaf and hard of hearing populations when they spun up these these services. And so it really was kind of a, a drive of ours to approach these telehealth companies, to approach our healthcare clients who are using telehealth services and say, look, you're missing a major portion of your population base because you're not uh, providing interpretation services over your new telehealth platform. And so it was, it was really instrumental for us to make sure that we could integrate with every kind of telehealth platform that was out there, including our own, to bring that interpreter to the point of care. So we work, we work with all the major uh, video platforms that are out there, allowing us the and, and the provider the ability to get an interpreter when they're in a telehealth situation. Now, how does one know that the hospital that they're uh, going to attend offers this type of service or not? Great question. So you just mentioned earlier, you know, you, you see people on the news and they're, they're signing. That was all driven by the Civil Rights Act, Title VI. Title VI of the, of the uh, uh, Civil Rights Act, that equal access has to be for American Disability Act and so forth. And so hospitals are required. There's a, there's a compliance factor that says that you have to provide interpretation services when you come into the hospital. We work very closely with our partners to make sure that messaging is available for when a person comes in that's limited English proficient or deaf. And we put that in all the different target languages. Our Marty system, when you step up to it and use it, it actually, we can actually provide 250 different languages. Mm. So we're going to cover the gamut of, of languages that the, if a person comes in. And that signage is in target languages as well, allowing for people to see that, that the services are available. So we really work very closely with our, our, our partners in making sure that that happens. Once a facility knows of your service, how easy is it to get them on board? Are, have there been any obstacles, uh, I guess, fear of new things? Early on, you could only imagine, you know, we had some great early adopters, but video, again, was like so new. And you think about that today where it's like, well, wait a minute, everybody does like video and Zoom meetings because of the pandemic. But if you could only imagine back, you know, early 2000s, it was scary. People didn't know what this, this product was. They didn't know if it would work. And it was just the fact that, that, that um, technology has advanced so much. So many hospitals came on with their electronic medical records. And so there was a, a key adoption of uh, technology as, uh, as, as hospitals were providing more services. And being able to work very closely with our hospital clients and new partners and understanding wireless uh, type things for because all the devices are wireless. Uh, it's, it's, it's essentially an iPad with the application on it. And, um, you know, being able to have good, clear connection to, to make sure that the video looks good. We work very closely with our partners on, on things like that. Well, give us a website where we can learn more. Absolutely. So it's Up Health Inc., all one word, uphealthinc.com. 
and you can go right on there. Uh, under one of the tabs, we've got Marty. And if anybody's looking to uh, talk to us about the service or would like to put it in their facility, again, it's uphealthinc.com. And uh, we'd love to help out in any way that we can. Great. Andy, thank you so much for joining us here on Health Professional Radio. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Looking forward to our next conversation. Thanks, Neil. Appreciate it. Have a great day. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Andy Panos, president of U.S. Telehealth at UpHealth and founder of Marty. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.